بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم <تصفيق> الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Brothers and sisters in Islam السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته And we mentioned last week that it's so pleasurable between the husband and the wife well the spouses as Allah calls them He says spouses in azwaj which literally means spouses I didn't want to go into detail last week because we have some single men here, young people here, we have our sisters here, and we have married men here as well. But I'm too embarrassed to go into detail about the pleasures between the spouses in Jannah. But Allah says in the Quran, مَا تَشْتَهِ الْأَنفُسُ وَتَلَذُّ الْأَعْيُنُ or مَا تَشْتَهِ أَنفُسُ وَتَلَذُّ أَعْيُنُهُمْ Whatever the nafs desires and whatever your eyes want to taste. It is there for you in Jannah. Listen to the expression Allah uses. Whatever the anfus, nafs. You know the nafs? Nafs is the desires that are inside of us. The nafs desires for good taste. It desires for lustful temptations. It desires for all these things, right? Anything that makes you feel good. The nafs desires for it. So in Jannah, Allah SWT tells us, everything that the nafs desires, you will have it and more. And whatever the eye, taladh. Talath meaning taste, wants to taste. The eye can taste, different to the way the tongue tastes. The eye tastes as well. So you will have whatever your eye wants to taste in Jannah, and whatever your nafs wants to tempt for and desire. So there between the spouses. The spouse is un unimaginable beauty. And we stopped here with a bit of conversation. I want to continue from here, inshallah. The conversation between you and her or between her and you, between you and him, are beautiful. The first meeting. The first among the first words is salam, greeting of peace. There's nothing better than the word of greeting of peace. And the conversations are many. Some of the conversations are as follows. The spouse man says to his spouse woman in Jannah, to his zawja, Wallahi, everything that I have seen in Jannah, you are the most beautiful thing I have laid my eyes on so far. And she says to him, and there is nothing in Jannah that I have seen that is more beautiful than you till now. Basically, you've almost seen the majority of Jannah. You've basically seen what Jannah is made of. But obviously there are hidden things that you haven't seen yet. Everything in Jannah is not equal. Nothing in Jannah is equal to the beauty and the taste of your eyes of seeing one another, the spouses, except for one thing. And today, inshallah, I will tell you at the end of the talk what that is. The conversations also include words of singing, singing words. And the, the one that does the singing first is the wife, the spouse woman. She sings to her husband, the hurlain. Now obviously there's no more woman, the word woman in Jannah. But the, 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 the description or the terminology used for the women of Jannah is hurlain, hurain, lustrous eyes. And that's basically your wife. Al Rasul Sallallahu there is a hadith in Bukhari, and we'll get to it inshaAllah soon, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he was lifted in the Miraj, he passed by a palace. Its bricks were all gold. And the Rasul asked, Who is this palace for? And they said to him, It is for a man from Quraysh. The Prophet thought, he said, or I think this was actually in a dream. He said, I thought I was that man from Quraysh. So even the Prophet in Jannah, in Jannah, sees a palace and he wishes that it is his. There's nothing that you see in Jannah except that you wish that it was yours. Rasul Sallallahu is not greedy. In this world, he's most generous. In Jannah, however, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has made it so that you can be greedy for it. Did you not hear that Allah Subhanahu wa says in the Quran about the dua? We are du'unahu khawfan wa tamaan. They worship their Lord or supplicate to their Lord. Out of fear from hellfire and out of greed. Greed for what? For his Jannah. 
But Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sees this palace made of golden bricks. He said, wow. He says, he, th he thinks it's him from Quraysh. And then it is said to him, no, this is for Umar ibn al-Khattab. He said, if it wasn't, I remember the ghira of Umar ibn al-Khattab, his jealousy for his, his honor, his spouse. And he said, if it wasn't for his ghira, he said, I remembered his ghira, otherwise I was going to enter the palace. What's the ghira? His spouses are in there. Yes, I use plural, but we're going to get to that in a minute. His spouses are in there. And Umar ibn Khattab, when he, hears, when he heard this, he began to weep. Rasul Sallallahu asked him, why are you weeping, uh, Umar? And he said, Alayka agharu ya Rasul Allah. Am I going to be jealous for my honor when it comes to you, ya Rasul Allah? I will never. You are the, I trust you more than myself. In other words. So if the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi himself desired to enter this palace, imagine what would happen to us. So the spouses are in there waiting, and you are waiting for your husband. Among the things that she sings for him are نَحْنُ الْخَالِدَاتِ فَلَا نَمُتْنَ we, we, we sang this last week as well. And among the things that she says, we are the eternal, we will not die. We are the beautiful, our beauty will never fade. We are the youthful, we will never grow old. We are the pure, we will never go impure. And so on and so forth. So in Jannah, there is no menstruation. There is no postnatal bleeding. There is no ill feelings of any sort. There is no annoyance. So if the husband here complains that his wife annoys him, or she nags a lot, or the wife complains that her husband is uh, one who annoys her or one who hurts her with words, in Jannah there is no such thing. There is no such thing. You know when you're about to get married and you have this imagination in your head? The most beautiful husband you're going to get, the most beautiful wife you're going to get with this and that. 100% of the time you never get what you've imagined. Your dream. Well in Jannah, you dream and guess what? You get something beyond your dream. So the conversations begin between you and her. I remember one brother, who, a speaker, who, who, who made a joke and made me laugh, subhanAllah, I'd like to share it with you. He said, when I go to my palace and I've closed the door, I'm going to put, do not disturb for a thousand years. So no one disturb me. <laughs> Obviously, you have a right. How, why would you want to be disturbed? Now, your spouses are together and it's the most beautiful thing so far that you've ever had. So you spend time looking at each other, speaking together, singing for one another. Your wife has been clothed with clothing of silk, and you have clothing of silk of different sorts and types. You might think to yourself, this clothing of silk, is it just silk? Is that all we get in Jannah, just clothing made of silk? What if we want different material? My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, you are talking about the product of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If Allah tells us clothing of silk, then wouldn't there be Millions of types of silk, millions of fabrics of silk. You might desire a thick fabric that looks like this and feels like that. You will get it, but its material is silk. Its origin is silk. So for example, almost everything we wear, its origin is either from animals or the soil. But when you wear it, does it smell like animal? Does it feel like soil? Does it feel like plants? No. So when we say silk, it's a finest of the finest origin, original, finest sources. And here we don't, men are forbidden from wearing silk. Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tells us in the Sahih Hadith, whoever wears silk in this world will not wear the silk in Jannah. And whoever drinks the alcohol of this world, the wine of this world will not drink the wine of Jannah. The question now is, what if a person enters Jannah? They have been forgiven, so why should they not eat or have the, the, the wine of Jannah or the silk of the clothing. The Hadith Prophet ﷺ explains it where he says, except he who repents. Whoever drinks alcohol and does not repent, whoever drinks alcohol, alcohol and repents, then he will drink the wine of Jannah as well. In other words, whoever wears of the men the silk of this world, because it's forbidden for the men, but then repents, will get the silk of Jannah in other words. 
So repenting means you will enter Jannah and wear it. When the Prophet ﷺ said, you will not wear the silk of Jannah, meaning you will not enter the Jannah. You will not drink the wine of Jannah, you will not enter Jannah to drink its wine. For whoever enters it, nothing is forbidden within your level. My brothers and sisters in Islam, then you are given an entree. Now you have worn your beautiful clothing. The clothing of silk actually, now the, the clothing is of millions and trillions of different types of clothing. And where do you get them from? They actually come out of trees. <laughs> Strange, huh? They actually grow in fruits that come out of trees. And the tree which your clothing grows on is called Shajratu Tuba. Shajaratu Tuba, the Tuba tree. This Tuba tree is inside of the river, grows out of the river of Al Kawthar, of the Prophet, وسلم, the river of the Prophet. وسلم. And there are other trees similar to that called Tuba that grow out of different places. And in this huge tree, there are fruits. And these fruits, within these fruits, your clothing is in there. So they are preserved, untouched, and you just point and you desire, you point or you desire, and you look at these clothings. It never runs out. And the different types of clothing that you have will be there for you. So you're wearing this fine, and you've got your jewelry on. In another hadith, Rasul tells us, when you look at your spouse, your different spouses in Jannah, each spouse has clothing of different colors beyond what the eye could imagine. And they have 70 different types of jewelries. Each jewelry has 70 different types of colors. No color is the same as the other type of jewelry. So if there is a so she has 70 pieces of jewelry. One piece of jewelry has 70 colors in there of different types of what? Of stones and gems and metal and, and so on and so forth. The colors in this one is not the same as the second one and is not the same as the third one. It's not the same as the fourth one, 70 types. Not one of them has the colors the same as, not one color is the same as the other color in the other jewelry. And there are 70 different ones in these 70 different jewelries. So what can you imagine? Colors are different types. So that's just the jewelry that she's wearing. And you are wearing. But hers, obviously, her jewelry is better than yours. Because it is the desire of the man to see the beauty on the wife. As much as the desire of the wife to see it on her husband. But it's something special when it comes to decorating the woman. And the woman loves to decorate herself different to the man. The man likes to work hard, gets a little bit messy sometimes, and so on. But the wife, you know, he cleans up. But the wife, a little bit more. You understand what I'm talking about. So the delicacy is to the wife in Jannah and also to the man, but to the wife more. So now you are ready. What happens? You receive an entree. Your servants come to you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes these servants in the Quran, in Surah Al-Dahr. A'udhu billahi minash shaitan rajim Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. وَيَطُوفُ عَلَيْهِمْ وِلْدَانٌ مُخَلَّدُونَ إِذَا رَأَيْتَ وَيَطُوفُ عَلَيْهِمْ وِلْدَانٌ مُخَلَّدُونَ إذا رأيتهم حسبتهم لؤلؤا منثورا And they will come to you. Yatuf meaning they, they come and go. They come and go. To you, wildan mukhalladun. Young, human looking people. And you do not desire any lustful approach to these young looking servants of yours. But there are creatures in Jannah that are beautiful to look at. Allah says, إِذَا رَأَيْتَهُمْ When you see them, حَسِبْتَهُمْ You assume حَسِبْتَهُمْ لُؤْلُؤَ مَّنْثُورًا You will think that they are scattered pearls. Scattered pearls everywhere. So beautiful light, pearls shining. And what does a pearl do? What about diamonds? Diamonds of different colors, pearls of different colors. You see them walking around, scattering around, and they're smiling to you. So young servants going around, and another verse Allah says, بِأَكْوَابٍ وَأَبَارِيقَ وَكَأْسٍ مِّمَّعِينَ 
they were carrying with them trays. Trays full of things. In here, Allah subhanahu wa says, akwab, which means glasses of wine. Wa abariq, and jars and jugs that you fill the wine with, so they fill it for you, like waiters, going around for you. They love you. They want to serve you. They love serving you. In fact, they have been created with the desire to serve you. These servants of yours have been created from the beginning with the love and the desire to serve you. So they never get annoyed of it. They never complain. They never ask for a wage. For it is Allah who looks after them. They never get hungry. There is no need for them. They don't have a need. So there is no oppression. There is no oppression. In another hadith, or another, uh, in, in the ayat in the Quran and Sunnah, they serve you with fruits, they serve you with entrees. And you remember the hadith we mentioned last week? You will receive special types of meat as an entree and fruit. This meat is, tender, is, is a tender part of what extends from the liver of the whale. A noon, as in the hadith we mentioned last week. And one tender piece of that, Rasul says, it will feed, be enough for 70,000 people. Now this is like finger food, entree, appetizers. And the ones who prepare it for you are special cooks whom Allah subhanahu wa has created from the beginning as cooks. They didn't acquire this experience over time. They are created with that talent from the beginning. Then the feast has arrived. The, last week we mentioned the hadith about the Yahudi, the Jew, who asked the Prophet sallam, then what is their meal? He said, it is meat, beef from a buffalo that will be slaughtered in Jannah that has been eating from the tender grasses of Jannah. You will be fed beef along with all the seasonings and the other things around it, you know, and you are served with that. So now you sit with your spouse and the angels are with you and the servants are serving you. If you don't want the angels to be there, they don't have to be there. There are moments that you can take private areas to eat your feast, such as a huge room made of one pearl a room made of a pearl is it round is it square allah knows allah allah has designed it but it's made of one pearl not of many pearls put together one entire pearl and it is hollow on the inside meaning it's got rooms it's got features it's got uh, everything you desire in there is the romantic moments <laughs> romantic moments are in that pearl the meeting romantic moments are in that pearl and it has corners in there. On every corner, depending on how many spouses you have, there is a spouse waiting for you. When I say spouse, I'm talking to the men here more. We've already addressed the issue of if a woman desires more than one husband in Jannah. But I'm talking today in relation to that. There is no grudges, there is no jealousy, there is none of these ill feelings between the women or between the men. Now, this meeting moment could be in there if you want to have your feast. You could have in any room you want. There are feasts everywhere. In one hadith, it states that there are rooms with 70 different tables. Well, when I say tables, it's an ugly word to say. What kind of tables? 70 different, you know, laid out meals. You choose and you go around and you eat from these meals together. It is the most beautiful food you've ever tasted. You will never get fooled. So you won't get, you keep eating, but you'll never actually get full to the point where you can't eat anymore. There's no such thing in Jannah. You just keep eating and keep eating. And the satisfaction is there, but you will never get enough of anything you eat. You'll never get enough of anything you drink. Nor will you get hungry for it. So you say, oh, I'm really, you know, I'm really hungry for this. I haven't had it for a long time. No, you'll actually, you'll get the desire. You'll say, I want this. But it's not the type where you need it. It's just a pleasure. It's full on. You're just spoiling yourself. You will not get tooth decay. You will not, get, you'll not choke on your food. You will not need to wait until it digests because your stomach hurts from the digestion. You don't need to go to the toilet afterwards. لا يبولون فيها ولا يتغوطون. As the Prophet said, you'll never need to urinate in there. No, will never defecate. There's no such thing as digestion. One Bedouin asked, Ya Rasulullah, then how does the food escape? I mean, it goes in there, where does it go? 
He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it comes out of your body in similar to, 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 to sweat, but not, not exactly, exactly sweat, more like perspiration. It perspires, it's a perspiration out of your body with the smell of musk. Now when we say musk, that's just an average, common fragrance in Jannah. But beyond, how many types of musks, how many types of smells, it persp it, um, the perspiration comes out of your body from that food in the smell of musk. So, you know, in this world, when you sweat, you say, go have a shower, man. Please don't approach me until you've had a shower. You've got B.O. Who's got B.O. in this room? People, it's an unpleasant smell. In Jannah, you desire this odor. It's no longer a bad odor. So this is no need for perfume to put on. It comes out of you. You are the perfume itself. You eat it, you desire it, you, you have the pleasure, and then your body itself gives you the perfume. You might even want to wish for a certain type of odor to come out from that food, and it will come out. The Yahudi, the, the Jewish man said, okay, so now we eat the meal, what do we have to drink with it? You are actually served, you are served with wine. And the wine that you drink, the wine that you will drink is a non-intoxicating wine. Allah says in the Quran that they are silver flasks, flasks will be passed around and crystal glasses as clear as silver, all filled according to their wishes. And they'll be served a drink flavored with ginger. Which means you will be given a drink of wine flavored with ginger drawn from a special spring named Seek the Way. And they'll be served by ageless young servants who scurry about like pearls scattered around. Delight and magnificence will be what you see in every corner. They'll be clothed in lush green silk and rich, and rich brocade and will be adorned with bracelets of silver. Their Lord will provide them with the purest beverages and they'll be told, this is your reward for God has graciously accepted your efforts. What is this wine? Ibn Kathir says, it will not cause them headaches, nor will it make them lose their minds. Ibn Abbas says that there are four negative aspects of alcohol. He says, drunkenness, headaches, increased urination, and nausea and vomiting. The Arabs in those days before Islam, they used to drink a lot and they knew their wine, they loved their wine, they make poetry about wine. These are four negative side effects of drinking. Ibn Abbas says that Allah SWT has purified the wine of Jannah from all four of these things. The people of Jannah will drink a lot of wine, but it will not make them drunk. It will just give them pleasure. This is what it does. The Prophet ﷺ said, The inhabitants of Jannah will eat and drink therein, but they will not have to pass excrement. To blow their noses or to urinate, their food will be digested producing belch or these secretions which will give out a smell like that of musk. They will be inspired to declare the freedom of Allah from imperfection and proclaim His greatness as easily as you breathe. Meaning you say, Subhanallahi wa bihamdihi in Jannah. And this is as easy as you breathe. So you don't gasp for air over there. You might enter a water. And you think to yourself, do I, have to, do I have to hold my breath? No, you don't have to hold your breath. You can fly into the horizons and reach places. You don't have to be afraid of the cond condensation of air or oxygen or the lack of oxygen or too much oxygen or anything like that. Your breathing is simple. Your words are simple. In fact, sometimes you forget that you're even breathing or that you're not breathing. There's no need for breathing in Jannah. But there is no heartache. There is no displeasure of any of this of such. There are more a bit on mansions. In Jannah, Rasul Sallallahu said, the people of paradise will look at the dwellers of lofty mansions, superior places in paradise. Like you look up and you'll see that there are mansions higher and better than yours. And the way you see them, Prophet Sallallahu says, you will see them like you see the stars in the sky. These are people who have gone to a higher place in Jannah. 
And one of the people asked, Ya Rasulullah, are these lofty mansions for the prophets which no one else can reach? And the Prophet ﷺ replied, No. Biyadi, or by Allah, in whose hands is my life. There are four men who be, there are four people who believe they are for people who believe in Allah and also believe in the Messenger. Bukhari and Muslim. So they could be for anybody, any of you. Work for them. They will be high, glittering, and no one can reach them. Abu Musa al-Ash'ari radiallahu anhu narrates, the Prophet sallallahu said, Verily for the believers in paradise are tents made of a single hollow pearl, the length of which would be 60 miles long from all sides, their wives being therein. The believer will go around them, visit them, and they will not be able to see each other. Meaning the women, the wives will not see each other. This is Sahih al jami Now brothers and sisters, in relation to many wives, why is this so? Well, my dear brothers and sisters, it's not the same as this world as we said before. And the most that a person will receive are the shuhada, the martyrs receive 72 of the hurlain. Why so many, and why is the mention of virgins in there? Well, virginity is something that is desired by men, whether they are Muslim or non-Muslim. It is the nature of man. And there are many researchers that have done, been, been, been uh, taken care of by people and even non-Muslims, scientists and people who understand the biology of the human being. Let's not talk about religion over here. Let's talk about the bio biology of the person. The biology of the man is as such. This type of a desire exists within the minds of men. And you know of illegal markets where they use women for prostitution and they sell them for the highest bidder. This is true. They auction them out. And when she is a virgin, and the younger she is, and the more virgin she, and, and the younger she is, and, the, and if she is a virgin, then she is quadruple the price of any other woman that they have in this black market. This actually exists, and no one can deny it. But when it comes to saying religion says virgins in Jannah, everybody seems to, you know, the non-Muslims seem to make a big deal out of it. This is reality. This is real. So when Allah subhanahu wa says virgins, this is something that is rare. And in Jannah, everything is rare. And the women that enter Jannah are virgins as well. But is the virginity the same as here? There is no pain. There is no of any of such. There's no displeasure. It's something of a different sort. It means purity. Because Allah says also in the Quran, لَمْ يَطْمِثْهُنَّ إِنْسٌ قَبْلَهُمْ وَلَا جَانٌ No human being, nor jinn has ever touched them before in Jannah. So your features, your forms, the women of Jannah and the women that enter Jannah, they are cre recreated and nothing has touched them, nothing has come close to them. When Allah says virgins, they are pure in every sense of the word, untouched, they're just for you and you are just for them. Many, well, it was also the desire of man naturally in this world that, you know, there is a desire that exists to have many women. And this is something also very normal. It's not something abnormal, it's not something to be shocked about. It's very normal. But the mind of the man in this world says to himself, you know, one or two or three or four women as Allah has, has allowed is enough. So the mind tells you that. The man restrains himself from that. But the desire, if you let it go naturally, it will desire that. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if in this world you think of rape, you think of fornication, you think of adultery, you think of prostitution and all of that stuff, then, behold, you will, O men, because mostly the men desire this, in Jannah you will get this. So do not resort to rape, do not resort to adultery, do not resort to fornication. Allah addresses the man more. Why? Because the man is more prone to do these things in this life, on a greater percentage. Women are more protective over themselves. Man is more of an attacker. This is the nature of their biology. Even between husband and wife, when it comes to you know, intimacy, you will see the biology interpreting what I just said. But is there ill feelings? No. It's not the same as this world. And as I said before, Ibn al-Qayyim sees the opinion that uh, women may desire more than one man if they wish. Some scholars differed, but we leave it at that, insha'Allah ta'ala. In Jannah, there are rivers underneath your palace, and there are rivers underneath other palaces, and there are rivers that don't go under your palace. But there are four particular rivers that every single person shares in their property. 
How do they run underneath your palace? How do they run underneath you? Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. But you can see them, you can taste them, you can touch them. The four rivers are the river of honey, the river of water, river of milk, and the river of wine. These are common rivers that are shared by all the inhabitants of Jannah. Allah says in the Quran, The example of paradise, of what the pious people have been promised. In paradise there are rivers of water that will never ever go off and will never change color. Rivers of milk that will never also, doesn't have a use by date, doesn't ever go off. And rivers of wine that will not make the mind lose itself. And rivers of honey that will always remain pure forever and ever. There's also a river of Kothar. Rasul Sallallahu says, when I was in the Mi'raj, I passed by a river that was so beautiful. The color is beautiful, better, nicer, than, whiter than milk. And I put my hand on the water. It's glittering, beautiful. And I could smell, I could smell a fragrance, a fragrance of musk when I, when I tapped it with my hand. He said, that is the musk. Rasul Sallallahu was once praying and then he put his hand forward and then he moved away as if he's afraid of something. Then the, mess, the companions asked him, Ya Rasulullah, what is it that you did in your prayer? He said, a bundle of grapes was shown to me. It was shown to me. It was from one of the trees of Jannah. And I put my hand out to reach it. Take one, just one grape of that bundle. But then, hellfire was also shown to me and I moved away. They said, Ya Rasulullah, what would happen if you got that grape? He said, if I got one of those grapes, it would be enough. Or actually that bundle will be enough for all of the people of the world. One bundle of grape. One Bedouin said, Ya Rasulullah, describe to me grapes in Jannah. He said, it grows on a tree called Tuba, also Tuba, from the river of Kothar. And there's a lot of description on how huge the branches are and how huge the bundles of grapes are and how huge one grape is. And the Bedouin keeps asking, how great is it? How big is it? And then he finally said to him, how big is one grape? He said, this big. And then he said, and he described him, he said to him, uh, have you ever had a huge meal on a feast where you slaughtered so many camels and, and you fed everyone? He said, what, are you saying that that one grape is enough for my whole family, my whole tribe? He said, even more, one little grape, just one grape. So beyond our imaginations is what is in there. A Bedouin once asked the Prophet when he was describing Jannah and he said, Ya Rasulullah, can we farm Sorry, not a Bedouin. A man asked, Ya Rasulullah, can we farm in Jannah? I want to plant and graze. <laughs> and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, he, he smiled. He said, Rajulan, ana rajulan min ahlil jannah istadhana rabbahu fi zarra. A man in paradise sought permission from his Lord if he can plant. Faqala lahu, Allah SWT said to him, Awalasta fi ma shi'at? Are you not already in whatever you desire? Whatever you wish for can just happen. He will say, yes, my Lord, I am in anything I desire. Sorry, I, I read too much of it. He said, I like to plant. Allah, the Rasul says, and so he is granted that. He plants the seed and it immediately begins to blossom and his eyesight and the growth of his plantation begin to race each other very quickly 
and it's ripened and it is ready so quickly and it is so far from that one seed that he could see his plantation as, as much as mountains. And then Allah says, Dunaka yabna Adam, fa'innaka la yushbi'uka shay. So the man goes after all his plantation, he sees it the size of mountains and he wants to grab it all. And Allah says, O oh son of Adam, nothing is enough for you. And Allah is happy about that. And he tells us, his pleasure, his pleasure is saying that I don't want you to ever be run out of satisfaction. You'll always be satisfied and always get more. And because I've created you in a way where you will never get enough. And so Jannah is made for those who will never get enough. You'll always want more and always want more. And then one man, a better one, said, Ya Rasulullah, Wallahi, this man who's asked to plant in Jannah, I don't see him except one of the Muhajireen or the Ansar. He's not one of us. We better ones don't like to plant. I don't want to be that. And the Prophet Sallallahu laughed. Fadahika Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. My brothers and sisters, I did promise you that we're going to talk about the better thing that you will see in Jannah than the spouse. But I think we're going to have to leave that for next week because it is the conclusion I wanted to end this whole series with. So next week, inshallah, we will continue this topic. You need to come because it is the most interesting part of our whole series, inshallah, for me as well. So next week, inshallah, we'll talk about the remainder of the things in Jannah, a few of the miscellaneous issues, and then we will talk about the final pleasure that we are waiting for in Jannah. Jazakumullah khair for listening. Hada wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.